Hello again, you botters. A variable is a placeholder for a piece of data. If you'd like to enter reusable or changing bits of information into your script, then you want to use a variable. Think of it like a sticky note. For example, you might want a variable to stand for a username that you want to use several times. Or you may use a variable to display the number of times that a loop has completed. These sticky notes will come in handy for most users. So watch carefully as we go through the ways to interact with and create them. To get started, let's create a simple variable. We're going under data commands and we're going to drag over the set command. Let's go ahead and name our variable query. And we're going to enter a value. Let's look for UBOT Studio. Now we've seen a million times by now how to enter a field, so let's just go ahead and drag this over. Now instead of typing some text in here manually, we're going to go to our variable section on our toolbar. You'll notice that my query variable is right here and I can drag it over. Now I'll click OK and give this a run and you'll see that it typed my variable into the field for us. Now if I want to change this, I can edit it, I can type something else, we'll say UBOT Tutorials, and run this again, and you can see that now it's typed that in for me. So using the exact same command, but different data for a variable, we're able to type something entirely different. But variables aren't limited to just storing text. We can also store numbers, and we can manipulate those numbers. Let's delete what we have here. We'll drag over another set. We'll just call this count. New value, we're going to enter 1. And now we're going to create a simple loop. How many times do we want this to run? Uh, we'll say 10. Now what we're going to do in this loop is we're going to change the attribute of this field attribute to name value and we want it to be our count variable. Now if I just run this right now it's not particularly interesting, it just keeps changing it to the same thing. Although why don't we slow it down by adding a wait command. We're just going to wait one second. Now we can make it more interesting by going into our data commands and dragging increment over. Now this gives us a choice of variables and we want to choose our count variable. Now let's run this again, and as you can see, it's adding one to the variable every time. So if you want to think about what's going on here, the loop is starting up, it's entering change attribute into the field here. It's changing the value of this field to the count variable, waiting a second, and at the end of the loop, it's incrementing the count variable by one so that when we come to the next loop and it prints the count variable in there again, it's going to be increased by one. Let's watch it one more time. And it counts up exactly like we expect. Variables are a pretty simple concept and I don't want to overcomplicate things, but I do want to show you one more thing. If we go back into our flow commands and we drag over an if, we can create a conditional in here by dragging our count and let's say if count is greater than 5. If the count is greater than 5, then what I want to do is change the value
and have it read the value is greater than 5. If the value isn't greater than 5, then we'll just have it change to the number like we did before. So what we should expect to happen is that the first time this goes through, it's going to realize that count is not greater than 5 and it's going to show the number. Then we'll wait a second, we'll increment the count, it's going to go through again. And since the count again is not greater than 5, it's going to show the number. It's going to keep doing that until it gets to the number 5. After that, it's going to show the value is greater than 5 in the text field because that's what we're asking it to do in the if. So let's give it a try and see if it works right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The value is greater than 5. And now on each loop iteration, because the count is greater than 5, it continues to print the value is greater than 5. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for listening and I look forward to seeing you next time.